everybody. Today I am going to show you the first few steps in how to make the shepherd's hook. Um, in this unit, we are doing our bending and our grinding. So the first thing we need to do is get our metal ready and prepared. We are going to be using a chop saw to cut our half inch round stock. Now make sure we have some safety things. Uh, number one, safety glasses are a must when we are cutting. We also want to make sure that we have a face shield when we're doing this. It's going to create a lot of sparks, so be very careful. If you want, you can wear a pair of the welding gloves to kind of prevent your hands from getting any of the sparks on them. If you feel more comfortable not having that on there, it is okay. But safety glasses and safety shield, face shield are a must. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you guys, we have our um, chop saw located on the ground. It's not mounted to anything, so that's why we keep it on the ground in case it tends to move. We also have some protective metal back behind here, so the sparks will go against here. Um, the chop saw, needs to get plugged in to the outlet in between the two tool closets. All right, so you're just gonna use an extension cord. We're gonna run that over here. All right, and we make sure that we keep the cord out of the way when we have it plugged in. The first thing I'm going to do before I put my safety stuff on is I'm going to cut two pieces of the half inch metal using the chop saw. First piece is going to be five and six, five and five feet, six inches long and the other one is going to be 12 inches long. Now, when you do this, you only get one shot at it, so you need to make sure you measure twice, cut once. So I'm going to go ahead on the end and I'm going to measure down five inch, or five feet, six inches, which is five and a half feet. So take your tape measure, you're gonna place it on the end, you're gonna find your five feet, six inches, So I'm going to make a little mark right there, okay? Then from that mark, I'm going to measure down 12 inches because that'll be my other piece I'm going to cut. Take, measure 12 inches, make a little mark. And now I know that I have my pieces. I'm going to double check my measurements one more time. I want five feet, six inches, and then I want 12 inches. All right, so when we use a chop saw, we're gonna to have to clamp our material inside of here. Right here we have a lead screw that's going to tighten our material up against our fence in the back. So to loosen this up, we just flip this switch here and we can pull back our part that's going to just tighten it in there. I'm gonna lift up my material, slide it in here, and find my first mark. I'm gonna push it up against the fence. I'm going to bring my handle down to where the blade is going to be touching my material. And once I have it where I like it, I'm gonna lock it into place. Push back the fence, lock it into place, and tighten it as tight as you can. You don't want this material to be moving on you. Now, we're gonna go ahead, get my paper out of the way. I'm gonna be prepared. I will get my hair back, place my safety glasses on, Get my face shield. All right, pull that down. If I have my gloves on, make sure you keep your hands away from this cutting wheel right here. It's cutting through half inch steel. You do not want that to be going through your hand or your fingers. All right. So when I use do this, all right. So now that I have my material, I'm going to hold on to the side. Bring my face shield down and pull the trigger. Okay. Make sure when you cut, you squeeze the trigger in, pull it all the way down to cut through your material. Then let go of the trigger and hold the handle down. You do not want to make sure, or you do not want to lift that up in case something can happen to that, that blade inside. All right. So I'm going to move this back. I'm going to grab the next piece. Again, I'm going to line that up at the edge of my blade. Lock it in place. shield down, hand on the trigger. Okay. So the next step that we have, 
we are going to take our materials over to the grinder. All right, now we are over at the grinder. If you take a look at your directions, it says take both pieces over to the grinder. We want to remove the metal burrs. When you cut through metal, it's gonna create some burrs on the edges. So all four ends need to be taken to the grinder and we're just going to quickly a little shave or grind off those little burrs that we have. When we use this, we wanna make sure that we have our helmet on, safety glasses on. You do not want to wear gloves at this point. Any extra dangly items that could get caught inside of the grinder should not be wearing, or you should, they are not permitted, and you should not be wearing. If you feel the need, you can pull up your sleeves. Mine is pretty tight here, so it should be okay. I'm gonna place my helmet on. All right. Don't forget, you want to have a can of water to make sure that when you're um, grinding, as it heats up the metal, to dip that inside of here. All right. I'm just gonna turn it on the grinder. Wait for it to come to full speed before you start. Just dip it in the water to cool it down. With the longer pieces, hold it with your body. removed, you are going to choose the two ends, one end on the short piece and one end on the long piece, and we're going to grind that down until it comes to a point shape. Now this could be a little time consuming, so as I'm grinding, then I'm going to make sure that I keep dipping it into the water. So I'll do one end just to show you what we're looking for. All right. into the ground. Make sure when you are done that you turn off the grinder, wait for it to come to a complete stop before you walk away. It's not very loud and with every the commotion or all the commotion going on in the class, it might, um, you might think it's turned off. So physically wait for it to stop, watch it, all right? Then you can walk away. Remember, you need to make a point on one of the short ends and one of the long ends. All right, now that I finished grinding two of the ends, I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna lay out my um, measurements that I need for bending. This is step number three. It says on the hook piece, which is going to be our longer piece, that's written on your directions, from one end, this is going to be from the and that we did not grind, okay? That we did not have come to a point. I am going to mark out three measurements. The first one is going to be two and a half inches. Make a little mark at two and a half inches. Then I'm going to make a mark at four inches. So I move my tape measure and I'm gonna mark out four inches from there. Then I'm gonna move my, my measurement again down to 16 inches. Now, when I do this, I need to make sure that I make a ring going all around the entire piece of metal. Because if you just leave it on one side, we're going to be doing some rotating and flipping inside of the bender. All right. So I'm just going to, now that I have those measurements, about right here. All right. And the last one. There we go. So now I have three rings from the end. Not the end that's ground, that comes to a point, our flat end. I have three marks, all right? Uh, now we're going to take it over to the compact bender. Let's move this table out of the way just a little bit. And we are going to bend our first measurement at two and a half inches. We're going to come on over here. Everything should be set up for you. 
on this compact bender. We kind of have everything marked out with tape to make it a little bit easier for you to see. We have some um, Sharpie markers on here to make it easier to understand. Uh, so when we do this, first part I'm going to do, move this <coughs> all right, my direction's right there. I'm going to take my half inch and I'm going to slide it in from this side. There is a square die over here, and then we have a smaller round die and a larger round die. Okay, so I'm going to bring in my, um, my two and a half inch, and I want to line that up with the edge of the square die, the farther part of the edge with the square die. And I'm gonna set that inside of there, making sure to keep my metal as flat as possible. Then I'm going to bring this around. And sometimes it works if you have a friend to help you hold your material for you. If not, you're just gonna have to bring and start to use your muscle as you're doing this. You just wanna pull it over as far as you can go. And this is basically making our first hook that we're going to have that would actually hang a planter or some type of flag. And you're just gonna bring it all the way as far as you can. And then you're gonna open it up. And so we basically just have a nice little hook part there. The next part we're going to set on is the four inch mark. Again, we're setting it on the farther part of our square. Now when I do this, I'm going to just push my metal through here, but I'm going to rotate it 180 degrees. All right, I'm going to place it on here, rotate it 180 degrees, okay? And I'm gonna start to bring, oh, you know what, I'm gonna use my hand though. Improvising. All right, so I have this on here. I'm just gonna grab the handle. And again, I rotated my metal 180 degrees, and I'm gonna pull my handle forward. And this one, make sure you know we rotated it, and we're gonna rot or pull it to the 45 degree mark. So I'm gonna pull that right there. Bring this back. And then we have one more mark that we're going to measure at, and that is that 16 inch mark that we had. This one, we are going to bend to 90 degrees. All right, I'm gonna stand right there, put a little pressure on it, make sure that it sits flat. And now this one's gonna go 90 degrees. And you're using your body as your weight. There we go. So notice, as we bend our metal, I'm gonna bring this in here. It tends to weaken and change and things like that. We will end up grinding or wire wheeling this off to make it look a little bit better. Now I noticed I went ahead and I went a little bit past 90 degrees. That happens sometimes. All you have to do is flip this upside down Step on it one way and just push in the opposite direction. Okay? If you, if it's not 90 degrees, this portion is not 90 degrees. Um, if it's actually not quite, then you can put it back inside of there and pull a little forward. So if you go a little over or a little under, those are really easy fixes. So that is making the hook part. Now, we have the stand part that we're going to weld on here that's going to go into the ground. And all you're going to do is you're going to take this, you measure, mark the stand part at four inches. Four inches. Make your little mark on there. And again, I like to make the ring going all the way around just so I can see where I'm bending. I'm going to ring go all the way around. Take this. Place it inside of my die again, flat. Make sure it's the edge of the square. All right. And flat on there. And then you simply pull to 90 degrees. Voila. So this will end 
up getting welded onto here. So the next steps we'll show you is how to weld the stand on and how to weld your plasma cutting design up here as our brace. All right, we are finally to the welding part of our shepherd's hook. So hopefully by now you have your hook cut, bent, ground down, and you also have your stand part cut and ground and bent. So our next step that we need to do is we are going to grab a tape measure and a sharpie. From the end of our shepherd's hook, we're going to measure up 10 inches. Grab this, measure up 10 inches. I'm going to make a little mark. And I, again, I like to make a circle going all the way around it so I know exactly where I am going to weld when I set my piece down. Okay, so I have my circle going all the way around. When you do this welding, you might want to have a friend or a partner help hold when you weld on your stand. The reason I say this is because a lot of people just set their hook down with the hook part facing down. And if I were to weld this on here, it would be completely sideways. So I don't want to do that. You want to make sure, have a friend hold it flat on the table and have them get a helmet and they can just hold it to the 90 degrees as you do your welding. Now I'm going to do this, um, but I'll just do a little tack weld and then I can adjust where it needs to go. So we're going to be using the MIG welders for this. Reminder from um, your welding demonstrations earlier, first thing we want to do is we want to turn on our gas, make sure we open the cylinder all the way, check that the valves have pressure in them. If they don't, please come get me. Then we're going to go up, <clears throat> excuse me, we're going to go ahead and unwind our cords. I'm going to need to ground out my table. And when you guys are doing this, again, you'll be doing this in the welding booth. So you would actually, you can just ground right onto your material. Okay, I'm just going to do it under the table for the demonstration. Okay, um, want to make sure that I have welding gloves, have my welding helmet. Okay, Oops. and want my safety glasses on. Make sure I got my safety glasses, Put my helmet on. I'm going to go ahead, <clears throat> turn on my welder. Your settings should be right around 300 and um, 300 for your speed and 21 for your volts. If we need to make adjustments because it's not working, we absolutely can. All right, so I'm gonna get my stuff. Now, when I do this, <clears throat> I'm gonna kind of hold it close to my body and I'm gonna set my stand exactly where I want it. Watch to make sure that your stand is not pointing in, otherwise it's gonna be very hard. So you don't want to, you know, in like that. Otherwise, it's going to be very hard to get into the ground. You want to make sure that it is at a 90 degree angle. I'm going to grab this, I'm going to cover, and I'm just going to put a nice little tack right at my joint so I can see. Right? So I have it tacked. Since I did it by myself, I just put a little tack on there. Now I don't have to hold so hard, and that tack did not stay, so I'm going to do that again. Okay, cover. All right. So I have that on here. I'm going to flip this over, and I'm going to put a better weld on this side. Now I can kind of hold this down with my hand, and I'm going to place the bead going all the way around. Another one right over here. Alright, so I have that side welded. Flip it over, just retouch up my welds over on this side. Now I have my stand welded on, okay? The next part you're gonna do is your plasma cutting. Now, with your plasma cutting, depending on the metal you ended up choosing, sometimes it's a little hard. Set off to the side for a moment. 
So you'll have your plasma cutting design cut out. I don't have that. Um, but I just want to give you a little bit of a couple tips. Um, when you're welding this, you're just going to weld the bead along your seam of where you would like your metal to go. All right. So we're going to weld it on here and up to the top. What I like to do is find a thin little piece of metal under or in one of the scrap bins, and then I'll set that underneath my metal as I'm doing this, so that it's even as I go to weld. All right. So I just kind of put this as something that's going to lift it up just a tiny little bit. Then I bring this in here, and the next thing I would do, okay, have all my stuff, and I would just simply tack weld one spot on the side, tack weld one spot up on the top, and then I would go ahead and I would lay my bead down that I need. You get one side and you can actually flip it over once you have that weld on there and you can go ahead and weld the bead on each side and the top part. If you have any questions on what you need to do, please ask.